Okay, Matthew 17, 1. And it's quite funny because when you go back to 16, last chapter, and very saying to you, there shall be some standing here which shall not taste of death till the Son of Man come his kingdom. After six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother. That's why I say James is written by James and John, who are the brothers. Peter, James, and John were the elite. And bring them up to a high mountain apart. This is something the other disciples didn't see. Some believe this mountain may be Mount Hermon, the highest point in the promised land. He was transfigured before them. He's been changed. You know, Jesus was transfigured. <laughs> the world today is going transgender. They're coming males and becoming females, and females becoming males, and all the kinds of nonsense. And his face did shine as the sun. And we're going we're gonna to look at a lot of scripture tonight. And his raiment was white as the light. Now Matthew's not there. Matthew is truly writing by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Because Peter and James and John is there, not Matthew. Take note. His raiment was white as light. And behold, there came unto unto them Moses and Elias, that's Elijah you got your Greek and Hebrew talking with him so here is Jesus, he's bright and shining and there's Moses and Elijah the law and the prophets in that order then answered Peter and said unto Jesus Lord, it is good for us not, it is good for us to be here if thou wilt, let us make these three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias. Peter knew Greek. Now the question comes, will we know each other in heaven? How did Peter know who was Moses and Elijah? I mean, I don't know how many people have been since Adam. But Peter comes up, <laughs> Moses and Elijah, boom, he got it. And I don't think Moses and Elias is wearing a name tag. Hello, my name is Moses. You know, a little parting of the water. And hello, my name is Elias. And you know, 400 dead prophets. <laughs> Peter knew exactly who they were. And while yet he spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved son. And who I am well pleased, hear ye him. And when the disciples heard, they fell on their faces and were sore afraid. That's interesting because when they're going to come to the garden, and they say, we seek Jesus, he says, I am he, and they fall backward. Peter, James, and John fall forward on their faces in worship. Of this voice that's in the cloud. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise and be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. So, Mark 9. Mark chapter 9. Verse 2. Verse 1. And he said, Verily saying to you that there shall be some of them that stand here which shall not taste of death, the disciples, till they see the scene, the kingdom of God come with power. Now, the kingdom of God does not come when Jesus transfers the age. The only other thing that could be would be John who sees all he does in the book of Revelation. 
after six days, there's after six days, Jesus taketh with him Peter, James, and John. And leads them up to a high mountain apart by himself. And he transfigured before them. His raiment became shiny, exceedingly white as snow. Mark wasn't there. And the Holy Spirit told Matthew to write, his face shined as the sun, his raiment was white as light. He tells Mark, write snow. Snow white. Snow white. So as no filler, that's a cleaner, that's a dry cleaner you say today. That's a laundry attendant today. A nerve can clean can whiten them. So the raiment of Jesus, according to Mark the servant, Jesus the servant. Jesus the servant. No one could make Jesus as clean as he was. Matthew, as the king, chose him as the son, as his raiment of light. And there appeared unto him Elias and Moses. That one, the prophet, that one, the prophets before the law. And they talked with Jesus. Well, there was prophets before the law. Noah preached on the ark. And Peter answered and said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, one for Elias. Now what Peter's idea is, hey, let's build three tents. We'll build a tent for you, for Moses and Elias, and we'll sit out here uncovered. Peter wanted to camp out and stay here. For he wished not what to say, for they were sore of faith. So Peter has to open up his mouth. Peter's heart is always with the Lord, though it's wrong. And there was a cloud that overshadowed him, and a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son, hear him. And suddenly when they looked about, they saw no man anymore, save Jesus only with themselves. Okay, that's interesting. Because now you go to Luke chapter 9, and the transfiguration is more than the birth of Jesus. Yet you don't celebrate any time in the church the transfiguration. But you celebrate Christmas. Now, I was with a bunch of our, our church brethren and I. We had a good old time. I wasn't there for Christmas. It was the 11th. We had good time. We went to the nursing home caroling. Okay, I sang some of the some of those Christmas songs. They're, 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 they're scriptural. Especially by Martin Luther. And my question, I rose that no one answered. I said, why don't we sing these songs all year round? No one answered me. I mean, if we don't know the birthday of Jesus, is it December 20th? No. Well, why don't we sing it? Maybe one, one day out of the year, if we sing it regularly, maybe we'll hit it. <laughs> maybe we get the right day, maybe the rapture will happen. I don't know, but... But I tell you the, I tell you of the truth. There shall be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the, the kingdom of... That shows up three times more than the birth of Jesus. And anybody says they know what it is, they don't. Unless you're going to have a resurrection of the 11 disciples. I don't think so. That's... In the millennium. But all the disciples died. And it came to pass about eight days. Wait a minute. Matthew and Mark say after six. Luke says not eight days. About eight days. So 
This takes place on the seventh day. Put that with verse 27. Get yourself a pencil. Take your pencil and put a big question mark. I do. Did. Do. Mine's in pen. After these things, he took Peter, James, and John. Peter, John, and James. And went up to the mountain to pray. Uh-oh. Luke tells us who wasn't there. Holy Spirit says, write this. He went up to pray. As he prayed, the fashion, oh, there's a word, fashion of his countenance was altered. And his raiment was white and glistering. He sparkled. That's his raiment. That's not the sparkles you put on face painting. If this is Jesus in his glorious state, he's going to be the purest white and is going to glister. And behold, there talked with him two men, which was Moses and Elias. Elias, Elijah, Hebrew and Greek. Wow, you got three times tonight, Hebrew and Greek. Who appeared in glory. In glory. Now verse 32 says they saw his glory. 31 says in glory. Did Peter, James, and John end up in heaven? Like John would? Like where James, I mean, where Elijah is at this point? Where Moses is at this point? Because that would be quite interesting. No, in fact, is we're going to go talk about a man in a moment who went into glory and says, I don't know who, if I was in, a, in or out of body. But the people that were with me had no idea what was going on. They hid. And appeared in glory. What, what, what glory would Moses and Elias have outside of Jesus Christ? And spake of his decease that should be accomplished in Jerusalem. So what Jesus is doing with Moses and Elias. Moses, yes sir. Have I fulfilled all your prophecies in Matthew, Mark, Luke? Uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Got to go to the cross, sir. Elijah, yeah. Of all the prophets. You're the head prophet, evidently. Have I fulfilled everything written of me of the first advent before I go to that cross? Let me check. Yes, sir. You just got to go perform Isaiah 53. You're the suffering servant. Amen. They're talking about his death. Now, why is that remarkable? He just told his disciples he's going to suffer and die. What's his disciples doing? Who appeared in glory, thank you, to see while well, it should come in Jerusalem. But Peter and they that were with him, John and James, were heavily asleep. That's where the church age is today. It's heavily asleep. When they had when they awakened, they saw his glory, Jesus, and the two men that stood with him, they have no glory. So who appeared in glory 31? It's almost like Jesus went to heaven and Peter, James, and John saw it. Because it says in glory, then it says his glory. And glory spoken about heaven. Where Moses and Elijah are. And this is Mount Hermon in Palestine. Then Moses got to the promised land. That God told him, you can't.
And it came to pass as they departed from Peter, said to him, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, one for Elijah. He knew who they were talking, not knowing what he said. And when he said thus, there came a cloud and overshadowed them, and they feared as they entered into the cloud. Moses recognized that cloud. I don't know about Elijah. Now in the presence of God is Peter, uh, Peter, James, and John. And there came a voice out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son, hear him. And when the voice is passed, Jesus was found alone. And they kept it close and told no man in those days any of the things which they have seen. Peter's going to go tell you, forget first Peter or second Peter, he's going to tell you what happened up here. Then he's going to tell you you have a more sure word of prophecy. And the next day, and on the came to pass, on the next day they were come down from the hill. You know, I guess the Sabbath. Next day would have been the first day of the week. First day of the week, that's Acts, the church age. Now, Acts, chapter 9. Acts, chapter 9. You got to go scripture with scripture. You can't miss it. I'm going to actually chapter 9 in my Bible because the next place I want is here. All right. Next chapter 9. Oops, I'm in next chapter 10. All right. Acts chapter 9, verse 3. This is Saul. He is not Paul yet. As he journeyed, he came to Damascus, and suddenly there shined around about him a light from heaven. And fell to the earth, and behold, a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? He said, Who art thou, Lord? Huh? Great Pharisee. He goes, I'm a Pharisee, I'm a, I'm a Jew of the Jew, Hebrews of the Hebrews, Pharisee, and, and he didn't even know who the Lord was. And yet he was baptized by John. He walked with Jesus, and he saw the resurrected Christ, as he's about to see now, the office of the apostle. He said, I am Jesus whom thou persecute. Knows the I am. It's hard for thee to kick against the prince. And he trembled and astonished and said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And he said unto me, Arise and go to the city, and shall be told what thou must do. And the men which journey which stood speechless unlike Peter, hearing a voice but seeing no man. Well, the disciples saw three men. Acts 22.6 Now Paul is going to repeat his history, his, his testimony. And it came to pass that as I made my journey was come nigh to Damascus at noon. Uh oh, we got a time. Suddenly there shone from heaven a great light around me. Is it a great light? I fell to, unto the ground and heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why persecutest me? And I answered, Who art thou, Lord? He said, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom thou persecutest. And they that were with me saw the light and were afraid, but heard not the voice of him that spake to me. Did Peter, James, and John hear Moses in a light? Or they just see the light? Look at verse 11. When I could not see for the glory of that light, Now Saul is a lost man. Kind of art, so is Peter, James, and John. Chapter 26. 
verse oh boy, 13, I think. Verse 13. At midday, O king, I saw the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun, his face, shining round about me, glistering, and then which journeyed with me. That light that Paul saw from heaven was not only heaven, but it was Jesus. Now, Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3. So, you don't need to worry about Christmas lights. There's a plenty of light coming in ink, blue, green, red. And sparkling. Uh, Matthew chapter 3, verse 17. The, the baptism of Jesus. Verse 17. Jesus is in the water. He's completely wet. Because he's immersed. A voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. God never says I'm proud. He says, well done, well pleased. That's what he said about Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. All right. Mark 1. Count it now. This is 2. Mark 1, 11. I mean, us Baptists, we don't have a baptism of Jesus day, though the baptism of Jesus shows up more times than the, than the birth of Jesus. The, ba the Baptists don't celebrate the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, though the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus is all four uh, Gospels and all through the, the epistles of Paul, Peter, and J James. Some churches have the Lord's Supper once in a while. Some have it once a month. Some overdo it every service. Mark 1.11, there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. All right. Luke 3.22, third time. And the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved Son in thee who I am open. Look at that light. Look at the Apostle Paul. Look at, we're at the baptism of Jesus. And the journey of Moses in the wilderness was at night there was a pillar of fire and during the day there was a pillar of a cloud. More times in the birth of Jesus. That's the scriptures. That's what's laid out. And the Bible say at, in the law, the testimony of two or three, it shall be established. There were three people up there that witnessed the transfiguration. At the birthday of Jesus, there were the shepherds. Okay, they went and told everybody after they left the scene, but where were they afterwards in the scriptures? You know, Harold, the Magi came, visited the two-year-old about Jesus, gave him gold, silver, and, 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 and frankincense, and he didn't grab the gold and put it in his mouth and go, Google, Google. He's about two years old. 
Well, boy, when a picture, oh, this is pretty colorful. The fact is that Joseph and Mary, who are poor with this child of Mary and the Holy Spirit, that, that the father has adopted this child, are going to make a journey into Egypt, needed money. But sell the gold, well, I don't, not sell the gold, use the gold. Frankincense could be, could be sold. Myrrh could have been sold or traded with the Ishmaelites like they traded when they sold Joseph. Aha, aha, another type of Joseph. But there was no cloud from heaven. This is my son who I'm well at his birthday. The, the, one of the hymns we sing was that his radiant face or something like that. The face of Jesus did not glow. The face of the human Jesus was not a light bulb. Come on now. They lost Jesus at 13 years old. You figure if he had this big halo around his head, they'd go right to the spot. Oh, there he is down the road. See the halo? Wait a minute. Uh, Mary? Yeah. That's the sun setting. Oh, shoot. Yeah, okay. Let's find the other. Let's find the other glow. Because what we just read described the face of Jesus as the sun. Paul said it was above the noonday sun. If Jesus had a halo, they would definitely know who he was. There's the sun. There's the golden temple. And there's, this, there's Jesus walking around. But God had to come in a cloud. God had to come and say, this is my beloved son who I'm well pleased. To tell Peter, James, and John, that's him. <laughs> Even John got to the point in his ministry in prison, art thou the one? <laughs> the whole nation of Israel is going to be persecuting him and crucifying him. If his face glue, if his head glue. <laughs> Don't you think they would have received him? That only three saw the Mount of Transfiguration. Only saw, saw Jesus on the road of Damascus. The others saw the light, but they didn't hear nothing. And it sounds like, and I could be wrong about this, but it sounds like at the baptism of Jesus, when God spoke, it sounds like only John. And John says, Behold the Lamb of God which takes away the sin of the world. There's no glow. That's the Holy Spirit tapping him on the shoulder. There he is. There I am. There's God. And that Jesus is going to tell them, we're going to stop where we are now. Jesus is going to tell them, tell no man the vision. Why? Israel has rejected him. They're not going to listen. And all they're going to want to do is they find out if, if Jesus is here or Jesus is there. Heal us, heal us, feed us, feed us, take care of us, take care of us. The, the, the Messiah, crucify him. Crucify him. That's all it is. And it was so spectacular that Peter, James, and John were fast asleep. Looks like one of the times when they wake up, Moses lies and takes off. But Peter knew who they were. And so again, the question is, people say, well, I know my loved, my loved ones in heaven. How did Peter know? I don't think we're going to be walking around with he heaven. Hello, my name was... <laughs> that simple. 